Great. Can I have a thumbs up, Asma, if you can see my screen? Yep, you're good. It's mine. Thank you so much. So, hi, everyone. Happy Saturday. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to people joining from all across the globe. We're really excited for this particular session that we're hosting in April, and that's primarily on LinkedIn and interview preparation. So we really, really welcome you to be part of the session. So before we move forward, a brief introduction about the community and what we are and how we are doing it. So hi everyone, I am Saman Fatima. I am the global lead for BBWIC, that is Breaking Barriers Women in Cybersecurity. And with that, we move forward with the agenda that we are going to have today. So first is we'll talk more about what is the community. If you're really interested to join it, be part of the future events, please go ahead. We'll have links shared in the chat section for you to know more about the community. And then we'll hand it over to our leaders, Seema and Ken, to have a discussion on the event for you all, uh, you know, to help you better with that uh, preparation. So with that, uh, we are breaking barriers, women in cybersecurity, and uh, we are actually working towards to actually have envisioned women as leaders. And also we are a nonprofit organization uh, under the Canada NSP Act. Uh, we'll have more links shared in the chat section once I am done. So you can visit our website and you can join us today. Uh, you can register this particular form on the website, know more about what are the events we're hosting, about different things about cybersecurity and be part of it. We are available on a lot of social handles as well. We are available on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. And once you be part of the community, you can be a part of the informal conversations on Slack. And we have more things hosted on Mighty Networks as well. So we are warriors, not warriors. That's the tagline that we have for BBWIC. And we'll be glad to have many of you join us today after this session. So. Without further ado, we will welcome Seema and Ken. Seema, who is the Senior Product Marketing Manager with Cisco, and Ken, who is CEO at CyberLife. And with that, they're also the board members of BBWIC. Seema handles career advancement, and Ken is part of sponsorship and collaboration. And they will be taking you forward with different prep parts for LinkedIn and interview. So I hand it over to you, Seema and Ken, and please everyone have as many questions. We will be moderating that all through the session. Thank you so much. Um, I have Thank a quick you. question, Thanks, Saman. Saman. Sorry, sorry, Ken and Seema, before you jump in. Yeah, uh, we are yeah, recording uh, this session, right? Yeah, it's, it shows recording. Yes. So yeah, I see yeah, yeah. questions yeah. in chat. Yeah, yeah, so it's recording. OK, so, so what, we are uh, already recording or not? I think we, yeah. we are not. Yes, I cannot yeah. see. No, it's, it's are, recording yeah. already. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Perfect. We're good. Sorry. No worries. Good. Well, well, welcome. Welcome, everyone. And yes, we are recording for anyone that still has that question in chat. Uh, Seema and I were excited about today. We're going to, um, just to kind of give you an idea, and I'll let Seema introduce yourself in a little bit. Um, I've been in cyber and IT and all that good stuff for a long time. Uh, many of you have probably seen me on LinkedIn talking trash and, and getting people upset. Um, that's usually <laughs> what I do well. So um, today we're going to just kind of agenda. We're going to start off with a little discussion around resumes. Uh, Saman and team, they did send out a survey. A lot of people's responses were around that initial, getting that initial conversation. So getting that job interview, essentially. So we're going to talk a little bit on resumes. We're going to do quite a bit on LinkedIn. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about interviews as well. And then really just kind of open it up at that point for any specific questions people may have throughout the, the session. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Seema, let you kind of do a short intro, and then we'll yes. we'll just dive right in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. I'm Seema Kathuria. Um, as someone had introduced me, I work at Cisco Systems to, um, as of now, and I've been in cybersecurity for uh, many, many years also, um, as Ken, mostly in a professional, a cybersecurity marketing professional role. And so I've seen both the development side when I work with my product managers and developing new features that our customers need, but also seen the customer side um, at events like RSA, which is coming up very soon here in San Francisco where I live. And so I'm really pleased today to have this forum uh, to work with Ken and uh, really help all of you um, who have any questions around interview preparation, around resume help, 
Um, but we'll focus mostly on interviews and LinkedIn just because that is top of mind today in today's economic landscape. Um, do we want to jump in, Ken? I know we had one or two resume examples. Do you want to pull those up? Would you like me to? I also have them on my desktop. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll pull those up. Uh, I'm going to share real quick a, uh, a website with everyone. It's called jobscan.co. And let me screen share here real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about, if I can find it. Um, but anyways, what this website allows you to do is, as the name applies, scan your resume. So um, if you can't see that, let me know. It might take a second to show on your screen. But basically, this website, I'm. let me just start. I'm not affiliated with the, web, with the website at all. I came across it, I think, maybe a month ago or something like that. But if you sign if you sign up, then it's free to sign up. You can do, I think, up to five free scans of your resume compared to a job posting. So this is a good way to kind of do a comparison. Like, do I have the right keywords on my resume for this job posting? Do I have the skills they're looking for? And it gives you this uh, little matching percentage on the side here. What, what their website says is like, if you're matching like 80% or more, then you're probably going to be good for the position as far as like getting a actual interview. But if you're anything less than that, then you probably need to look at your resume and try to pull out different things. So what I what I have here is actually the first resume we're going to show you in a second here is I scanned it against just a cybersecurity engineer job posting. So you see it only matches about a third of the way. And the person's resume that we're showing is actually someone very experienced, but they just don't have the right keywords on their resume. So just showing you this this tool, you can go check it out if, if you want, uh, jobscan.co or jobscan.co. Um, that's, that's the tool, essentially, like I said, a free scan of your resume against whatever job posting you're looking at. I don't know how good it actually is as far as like, let me stop sharing there. I don't know how good it is as far as like actually helping you get a job interview, uh, but it does seem to to pull out some good information and, and give you a good idea of, of where you might have some gaps at. So just something to check out. Um, and yeah, I can share, see me if you want me to share the resume. Yeah, let's start. Or, yeah, okay, cool. that'll be great. Let me find my tab again. And of course, the tips that we would share today on resume, you know, our LinkedIn and whatnot, we would, of course, kind of take a cybersecurity angle because that's kind of where we've come from, from a domain perspective. But certainly there'll be also tips that are pretty general that I think anyone could really follow. So feel free to share the tips with your network of friends and family, too, as you see relevant. Hopefully this is really of value beyond even just uh, today's session. All right. So Teams is a little weird. So you guys are going to see some faces and then you'll see the resumes in a second <laughs> All right. There we go. So this first resume, if everyone can see it, um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go kind of back and forth a little bit as a, a, a section of the resume. And like I said, we're not going to spend a ton of time on resumes, but I do. These are two kind of different resumes in the formatting, and that'll give you a good perspective of when we think about ATS systems or applicant tracking systems. That's what um, probably 99.9% .9 of companies are using these days. And there's different ones based on the company. Um, but there's usually, I think there's like three or four kind of major ones. In any event, they all function the same way. And what they do is they just do a quick scan of your resume. They look for certain keywords. They rank things for the uh, the hiring manager or the recruiter. And then based on the ranking, some human will look at it or it'll go in the trash pile. So um, that's that's essentially how ATS uh, resume, resume systems work. So this year, this first resume is actually the one that I ran against that job scan website. Um, we try to sanitize these resumes as much as possible. If this is your resume and you don't want anybody to know that, then don't just don't say anything because your name and stuff is sanitized off here. Um, I guess I'll start, since I'm jabbering away, I'll start first on my thoughts and then turn it over to you, Seema. So okay. for me as a hiring manager, this resume is pretty clean above the fold. And all above the fold means is a marketing term where anything below the fold, I have to scroll down, you know, see just like a website page. Out on the the internet, especially social media, of you only need a one-page resume. You should only you should try to condense everything into one page. That's not actually true. You obviously don't want a 58-page resume, but you just want to be able to capture attention on that first page, and specifically in the area we call above the fold, which is what you're seeing right here. So essentially, that top part of your resume, that's where you want to try to capture attention and show that you have value, because then as a hiring manager, I'm going to take the time to scroll down and read through the rest of page one. I usually don't go beyond page two. So if you've got like a five page, re page resume, I'm never going to look at all that stuff. But you don't have to try to condense everything if you're someone experienced out there. You don't have to try to smash it all 
into a single page. Um, that's just bad advice a lot of people share on social media. So for me, what stands out here is number one, there's too much text in the summary section for me personally. Um, and I understand why, right? This person's trying to show a lot of different value and some of the key points there, and, and, and that's okay. My recommendation for this person would be actually to just do like one or two sentences and then focus more on these bullet points they have, because that's gonna make it very easy for me to read it. And I can see almost immediately, like, are you potentially a match for the job that I have open? So when you're writing a resume, at least from my perspective, try to use bullet points like this person has but try to use less text because again, you wanna capture attention. And if anyone's ever tried to post on social media, you know, like TikTok, Facebook, whatever you, LinkedIn, um, Snapchat, I don't know what the younger generation uses, I'm an older guy, but basically people have short attention spans these days, right? A matter of seconds sometimes. So it's the same way in the job market, people have short attention spans. So the more you can just show them a little impact initially, that gets them curious and they wanna learn more. So that's my thoughts on this initial part of the resume. Seema, I'll turn it over Ken, to you. Yeah, those are wonderful um, piece of advice. One more thing that really that I like about it, certainly that's working for them is having that LinkedIn profile. Of course, we've anonymized here, but LinkedIn profile is becoming so popular nowadays. Encourage you to link it, make it easy for people. Think about like a hiring manager, think about a recruiter, you want to make it easy for them. So whatever you can do to your point about summarizing, getting the key relevant keywords in there for the specific role that you're applying for is going to become so important. And like we said, they only have a few seconds. So you want to get to the salient points of why are you the perfect candidate for this particular role? What's your relevant experience? What are the key terms and perhaps maybe programs and technologies that you worked on? It could be certain keywords in that um, in that role, that description. It could be maybe it's a leader. So you make sure you have that keyword in there. Make it as specific as you can in a short time span in short real estate because you have really just that top of the fold. So I think that's where I, I agree with your points, Ken. Short and sweet, relevant to the specific job description. I know it's a lot of work. Think about it. If you're going to have more than a one page resume, it's going to be a lot of work to customize it also for that job description. So even if you have many years of experience, you might consider having summarized one page summary or one page resumes, even that kind of take a portion of your bigger two or three pager and then have it condensed. And then that top you know, of the fold will be your chance to really shine and share your story of why you're the best candidate for that role. That's how I think about it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'll just add on the keyword aspect of it for your resume, you typically want to use any keywords that are in the job description that you actually have the skills for, not just saturating your resume with keywords, but things you can legitimately back up at least four to five times somewhere throughout your resume. Because when you run it through the ATS systems or when it runs through the ATS systems, they're going to be scoring it based on that as well. So how many times do you actually match, for example, cybersecurity engineer? So Another thing with that is the job posting, the job title itself should be somewhere in here. If you've got, let's say you're a cybersecurity engineer already and you're trying to get another cybersecurity engineering job, then you should have cybersecurity engineer, engineer in here a few times, right? You should have, like this person has cybersecurity solutions engineer. You should have cybersecurity engineer with, you know, proven track record of, you know, X, Y, and Z with, you know, skilled in whatever. And then throughout your resume, that job title, those skills, the things they're looking for, they keep, you keep kind of flowing them throughout your resume. So that way your resume goes to the top of the, the matching pile as, as I like to call it. So um, awesome. keywords are important, but you have to be honest because if you s just slam your resume full of keywords from the job description and you come in for the interview, I'm gonna see right through that you don't have that actual skill in, in like 30 seconds. So you, you need to just be honest about it. If you don't know that skill, if you don't have that skill, you can always say, you know, studying for, you know, or currently learning Python as an example, right? Or currently learning Sim solutions, learning Splunk, learning, you know, whatever XDR solution, learning CrowdStrike, whatever. So just because you don't have the actual skill right now, doesn't mean you can't put like learning this thing and then have that keyword on your resume still, but just don't lie. That's the biggest thing. Just don't lie in your resume because it's very easy to spot that when we bring you in for an interview. Absolutely, Ken. I think that it has to be in your head because think about an interview, you're not going to be reading off your resume. You have to have it pretty solid in your head, which specific experiences are actually relevant when you get that interview. Yeah, absolutely. Honesty. Um, so I'm just going to see it on a little more. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Part. Yeah, um, go ahead. So, the, so the and we can't see it like and we can't see and we can't see it anymore. You have to sh again share it uh, again. Oh, yeah, I think when, for some reason it disappeared. So look I'm at the huge, same resume. I'm a, yeah, so I'm a huge Microsoft fan, by the way. I just love Teams. It's amazing. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's my favorite software in the world. Uh, can everyone see the resume again, or has it disappeared still? We can see the yeah the education certifications. Um, it's a little okay, bit cool. zoomed in though, so just you might want to zoom out of like a slight zoom out of the resume. A little more, maybe two times. Zoom it out more so we can see a little bit more, and you might want to scroll down because we're seeing now below that um, those six seven bullet points. Now we see yeah, education certifications technical. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. Is it any better now, Siva? This is good. This is decent. So it's okay, not just cool. So these are, when you get the hacker skills, this is what it's actually used for, just PDFs and PowerPoints. Um, so education certification. So the other thing I like about this person's resume, and I, and I like to focus on it, is because they've, they've, they've essentially, in the first part of this resume, put everything that I really care about initially when I'm looking at something. I, I see their skills. I see any educations or certs that I might be looking for. I also see any specific technical competencies. Now, one, I guess one maybe if I had to give a ding to this resume from the top part here, I, I wouldn't list Microsoft. Uh, like it's assumed that if you're experienced, you know how to use Microsoft Word and stuff like that. You don't have to list that unless you're going for like a, an executive assistant role or something where like that's your main focus. For anything cybersecurity, you, you don't have to list that. In any, it's just, it, again, it's assumed that you have that skill set of basic office software. So that, that'd be the only thing I would see in this top section here. Then the other thing I like is when you look at this person's experience, they actually are putting measurable impact things that they're doing, right? For example, if you just look here at this bullet, delivered you know, performance within 96% of planned schedule. That shows me that they can have some value. Now, I may not know exactly what that even means, but I see that they've got some kind of impact to their current organization or their past organization. And that's when you might hear a lot of people on social media talk about show your impact on your resume. That's what we're talking about is, is the more you can measure it to something, the better off it is. Now it could be when you're kind of newer, you don't really know like the metrics that the organization is, is uh, measuring your team against. You can always ask your boss, hey, and most, most companies, at least in the US will have a monthly meeting where they'll go over whatever the metrics that we're measuring against, whether that's ticketing system, whether that's financials, whether that's you know reducing risk, in different areas, you know, whatever that actual measuring stick is, uh, that that'll be in that meeting. So your boss should know. If they don't know, then their boss should know what those measuring uh, items are, and that can help you when you're actually going to do your resume. You can say, you know, did this, which contributed towards you know reducing this, or or you know reducing risk in these systems, or saving the company money, or whatever it is. You don't have to get very detailed like this person is with 96% because you may not be able to, but you do want to have something that shows your impact. Instead of just listing, I showed up at work, I worked with Splunk, I worked with an XDR, that, that doesn't tell me anything because a lot of people are lazy. They do the quiet quitting and they do work, but they don't actually do work. So I want to be able to see that you are actually a high performer. And the way to do that is to, to kind of niche down a little bit and show the actual measurable results as best as you can in your resume. And I think that's a great point, Ken. I want to add to that is, yeah, having some specific quantifiable things, having numbers, it could be really simple. Also, I know in the marketing world, for example, we will try to garner a certain number of leads that we want to get, certain number of potential customers to our white papers, to our webinars. So actually, a lot of things nowadays are possible made through web-based marketing or made through these tools that can actually measure the impact of content that you've created or maybe even certain projects that you've done you can go and ask for feedback of your peers or to ask your if you're actually selling this to your sales team or to another team outside even customers get some feedback maybe interview them and find out hey what's working what's not working based on the work you've done it could even be a feature if you're working on a feature of a product as an engineer find out get some real-time survey feedback send emails to customers work with your marketing teams they can make it happen for you to get that feedback, even if you don't get to have the direct visibility into that, you can probably um, be pretty creative on how you can get nowadays good metrics uh, with all these amazing digital tools. So I encourage you to think even up broadly, not just your day-to-day -day role, but how is this impacting ultimately your customers or your end um, you know, users of your particular work? So. And I'll just add, so if you're someone entry level or trying to get your very first job, whether it's first job or first job in, in tech, I will say that tr leverage any education you have as well. So if you don't have actual professional experience, is there any volunteer work you've done? And if not, maybe you consider doing some volunteer work or volunteering at conferences or just projects from school. All that stuff could be 
fleshed out in your resume to show that you can actually like solve problems. Because at the end of the day, we need problem solvers. We don't need people that collect 500 certifications and 26 college degrees and all that stuff, even though the job postings ask for all those things. But in reality, we need people that can solve problems because day one on the job, you're going to get new problems that your boss doesn't know how to solve. And if you can be the one solving them, now you're valuable. Now, when all these layoffs that people are experiencing now come around, if you make your boss's life easier and their boss's life easier, you're much less likely to get laid off. You, they, like they will go fight for you and they'll cut costs and they'll lay everybody else off, but they'll fight for you if you're actually doing it that way. I think that's the main things I wanted to show on this mm -hmm. resume. Um, you notice also this resume is very easy to read. This person doesn't list 500 bullet points under each job. They list you know, two to three or so. And that's all you need to list. Um, I think that's it. They had some publications. I had to redact all those for this one just because it would have given away exactly who it was. So let me pull up the other resume that we have here. Again, if this is your resume, you're going to hear me talking some trash about this one coming up. But um, that's all with love in mind, total love for you. But I, I'm just going to talk about why this one doesn't necessarily work. So can everyone see the this new resume? It should have a blue kind you of You can ribbon. see it. You can probably yeah. zoom out a little bit so we can see more of it from the uh, sides. It's kind of the center only. A little bit more. One more and then that's it. Yep, perfect. perfect. Good. Okay, cool. Um, so a few things on this resume. Well, number one is pretty, right? It's a very pretty resume. It catches your eye as a human. And, and it looks kind of fancy, like it was professionally done, you know, all these different sections. And, and it's a really nice resume. If I was back in the 1990s and handing somebody, somebody my resume, um, in 1990s is long before some of you are probably born on this call. But anyways, back in the ancient days when dinosaurs roamed the earth still, and I was young, uh, this type of resume would be something you might hand to somebody actually in person. The problem with this, with the automated systems is because of how this is formatted, it's, it's going to jumble all of the information on this resume. So for example, how this person has the, um, the columns here, the separate columns, all this is going to be meshed together. How they've got the, this rib, ribbon and their information here, that's going to be jumbly stuff for the ATS. So it's basically going to go to the trash file in the ATS system. Now, that's a little bad stuff talking about them. One other thing I'm going to say is that never put your date of birth or any personal information like that on your resume. If you're going to put a phone number, honestly, I would try to just get a Google voice number, link it to your cell phone, put that number down here. So that way you can make sure if you do apply for a job that's a fake job, they only have the fake number from Google voice. Uh, email, totally fine. As Seema mentioned earlier, adding the LinkedIn would be really good here. You don't need, and again, my advice is based on US. So if you're outside the US, take it with a grain of salt. It might be a little different based on where you live. But here in the US, you don't need to put like your home address, your home country, your city or anything like that, because that may be used to exclude you from jobs where you won't get an interview, even though you're the best candidate, just because you have a city listed there and the, and the job's remote. So remove all that stuff from your resume. It really should just be your name. Send a LinkedIn. And if you have like a GitHub or something like that, you can put that there as well. Now, I've talked a little trash about this person's resume. Let me talk about what I do like about it. And I probably should have started with that. I do like this, this summary. It's short, sweet. It's a little texty, but not, not too bad. Um, it's a little generic to, you know, detailed results oriented. Like, what does that mean? So this person, I would say, give me some measurable things that you've done and, and include them in there to catch my attention. But I do see, okay, IT manager who's been around for 10 years. To be a manager for 10 years, you probably have to be able to do something, right? You've got some skills in, in leadership. So that tells me, okay, maybe I do want to talk to this person if it's a IT manager type of role. Um, again, I already talked about these different columns here. The other thing that that I think this person could do better is just there's way too many bullets here. Like this is a this is they're writing a novel at this point, right? So two to three bullets, like you've seen on the other one, really flesh out what's kind of the value you might be able to bring to my organization, and then I'm going to bring you in for an interview, or I'm more likely to bring you in for an interview simply because of that. So I'll turn it over to you now, Seema, for any initial yeah. thoughts on this one. One, um, just to, oh, there's Seema, a question. can I say something? Sorry. Asta, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah actually, I, I was looking at the chat, Ken, uh, and Jillian shared that she missed what you said like a minute or two ago, a name or what. So um, oh, we yeah. kind yeah. of lost you for a second, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the kind of the, the information you should put at the top of your resume, your name, you can add certifications like this person did if you want to. 
probably don't need to just because you're going to put that throughout your resume elsewhere. But your name, a contact phone number, again, I recommend like use like Google Voice or something so you can not share your real cell phone number with people. Um, or there's different apps you can use as well. Uh, some of those might be paid though, but Google Voice is free if it's your personal email account. And then add your email address as well. And then of course your LinkedIn profile, put that on there. And then if you have like a GitHub, uh, GitLab, you know, any type of website where you where you show some of your work, like a portfolio, then you could put that there as well. But that's not a hard requirement to have it at the top there. But definitely name, contact phone number, contact email address, and then LinkedIn because you want to give them a way to contact you. So if I can't call you on your number, if it's disconnected, you know, you didn't pay your cell phone bill or whatever. If I email you, you don't respond because maybe you went to spam. I can always reach out to your LinkedIn and say, hey, been trying to reach you for a week. I want to bring you in for an interview. You know, your phone was off, your email, I, I didn't get a response there. So you want to give them enough ways to contact you without giving away your like your actual personal information if possible. Um, the way I the way I typically recommend the people I mentor do it as far as emails is you can create an email address for every different job you apply to. That's a lot. Just create like one email address would be my suggestion, a Gmail account for, you know, this period of your life of applying to jobs. You know, you could call it, uh, you know, whatever, Jill, Jillian.cyberengineer or something, you know, at gmail.com. And then you know that any job postings or any messages coming in there are all about the cyber engineer jobs you've been applying to. That way, if later on, you know, you're an executive or something, now you've got a new email address for your executive positions you're applying for. So just some some minor tips there, but yeah, those are the, the main things to keep at the top of your resume there. And again, it's really just so people can contact you for those job interviews. And what the other advice I had on this particular resume, Ken, was also that they mentioned about 10 years of experience. And one of the good best practices, is if you have about zero to 10 years of experience, you do wanna keep it to around one page. If it goes beyond 10 years of, again, relevant experience, then you might consider two pages. Again, you wanna make it relevant, short and sweet, and if you have less experience, then certainly you don't want to exaggerate it or get too, not leave enough for time for the interview process itself to explain their story. So kind of keep it short. Again, three bullet points, you know, for, for, for each kind of work experience. Here I'm seeing that this is going pretty long. So I would almost recommend really parsing it down to one page if it's just about 10 years of experience overall. Just shows that, again, you're being really open and transparent and honest about how much experience you have and not making it hard for that person to understand, okay, with 10 years of experience, you're just telling me a whole story. So what am I going to ask in an interview? So I find that, you know, to be a good best practice. That's about it. That's the main advice I would have there. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. That's, that's kind of the short uh, version. We just want to cover some on resumes. Um, I guess I'll, we can save questions to the end, but does anyone have any burning questions on resumes before we start jumping into the, the LinkedIn and, and other stuff? If someone or Asta want to jump in and look at the chat for us, um, if there are any specific oh, yeah. questions on resumes, otherwise. Uh, we'll oh, we have all a I... question. I, I see a question. Can we get a perfect resume template that can be shared with all of the attendees or maybe we can edit accordingly? Do, we, do you have something Good like question. that? Question. Can yeah, so there's, I mean, it's not really a, a quote unquote perfect, you know, resume template out there because it really just kind of depends. Um, I can, um, so Jerry Ozier over on Simply Cyber, his website, he has some free resume templates, I believe. Um, I mean, I'm happy to share that, that resume I shared with, with you all, that first one. Happy to share that with Austin, then they can email that out to, to members, but just, I'm going to sanitize it a little more so I can take that person's, all their stuff off there. Um, and then, we'll, yeah, we'll share that out as a Word document for everyone just to have that kind of a similar format. Um, but yeah, that's, um, yeah. I mean, From a formatting, right? I guess, Ken, people are curious, especially with the ATS, yeah. it'll be good to know what is the right kind of format to not get too fancy, maybe, but make it look pleasing to the eye. So um, Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, like that first one is shared is a good one. I think Jerry Osher, like I said, he's got some free resume templates over on the Simply Cyber website. And he's also got some resume videos, I think, on a Simply Cyber YouTube channel. I've been on there a yeah. few times. I don't remember what I talked about on there. I think Threat Intel or something like that. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of them out there. It's just, I would I would avoid any resume templates and especially resume writers that are trying to turn your resume into that second one because that type of one with separate columns and all that, it's just the, the software just can't read that, right? So it jumbles it all up and, and it makes it very difficult to read. And if it, the more difficult it is, just like anything, if, for example, just running, right? A lot of people don't like to run because it's, first few minutes of it, it feels like you're going to die, right? Your body's like, oh my God, stop this stuff. What are you doing to me? But if you keep doing it and doing it, eventually that threshold, you know, grows, et cetera. In the same way, the more difficult it is for a hiring manager to like look at your resume 
the more likely they are to throw it in the trash, essentially. And you're not going to ever hear back from anybody. So yeah, we, we can share that template, but just keep in mind that that's not like the holy grail of templates or anything. Um, there's a lot of them out there and a lot of, I mean, a lot of them are good. A lot of them work. Um, there's another guy named, I think his name is Austin Bellcap or something like that. He's on, you'll find him on LinkedIn. He's connected to me on LinkedIn. He sent me a connection request a while ago, but he, he has, I think a whole YouTube channel on like resumes and interviews and stuff. And I'll try to figure out his name and actually sh share it with Austin them. Um, but that's another source. There's so many of the sources out there that you can use. It's just at a certain point, my recommendation is stop collecting information and actually put action behind it. Cause that's usually the biggest thing that stops you. I mean, we've all messed up. I can't tell you how many times I've messed up job, job interviews, you know, in the past. So we've all been there, done that. It's just, you just have to do it and experience it. And, um, and I guess this is a good segue to something we were talking about earlier. Seema is mm -hmm. just because you apply for a job, there's a few things behind that. It may not even be a real job. It could be, it could be a, a job posting put out by the company to make it look like they're hiring to try to attract, you know, top talent or whatever. It could be that they were hiring, but then the job requisition budget, it went away last week and they just haven't had time to, to take it down. It could be that it's an old job posting, especially on sites like Indeed or LinkedIn. And my recommendation there is just actually go to the company's website. Is that job open there? If it's not open, it's probably not actually open, even though you see it on LinkedIn or Indeed or whatever. Um, and you can always ask, the, you can always send a message like, hey, I, I saw this on LinkedIn. Is this still open? Now, instead of just being another applicant, you're somebody that reached out to the company and they, they'll probably say, oh yeah, it's still open. Let me let me talk to Sally, the hiring manager and connect you to, right? And now you just got to end to the company, to the hiring manager where you didn't have that before because you were trying to apply like everybody else. And then power LinkedIn. be mindful of, yeah, exactly, yeah, the mm -hmm. power, power of LinkedIn. The other thing to be mindful of is there are a lot of fake job postings out there from scammers trying to get your information. So, if you're looking at Indeed or ZipRecruiter or, I mean, even LinkedIn, look at the job, go to the company's website, do your OSINT, right, your open source intelligence, look at the company website, is the job actually open, and then apply on the company website. Don't apply on LinkedIn, that's lazy. Don't apply on Indeed, that's the lazy way. Go to the company website because I've actually gotten job interviews before for things I was never qualified for just because I applied on the company website and that's where they were taking the most applications from initially, right? They, the other ones, they put it out there because that's part of their internal process, but they were focused on people that actually took the time to go to the website and apply. So if that's you, you can oftentimes get a job interview for things you are you have honestly no business applying for in the first place, but you can get the job interview because you took the time to actually go to the website and, and look there. So that's my- Great advice. Well, I'll turn it over to you, Seema, on, on that yeah, part. Yeah. Just be careful these days. There's a lot of fake ones out there. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the reality. And then the, I know that we also have a question, Asta and the team here from Jose. So maybe, maybe we can put his hand down or have him uh, actually come unmuted. Jose, do you want to pose your question for us? Nice. Yeah, so I wanted to ask a question. Um, I, I've seen you guys uh, speak on uh, experience versus impact. So from my past experience, I typically tend to save my impact for like interviews just to have something to talk about. How can, mm -hmm. how can I position myself or what, what should my interview be focused on if I'm going to be presenting my impact and, and experience on my resume? That's a really good question. In a way, think of it like if even before being interviewed, how do you get someone's attention? So I, I totally respect the fact that you want to save some of the good stuff for later. But I think in a way now with just a very highly competitive market, unfortunately, that, you know, the situation right now is that there are more candidates out there than there are jobs. I would say go ahead and market yourself. You know, really, if you think that there's specific stories you want to share, specific situations in work where someone had given you really huge kudos, maybe you really helped to land a specific feature, maybe you helped to you know, really, really make an impact in a specific project for your clients, even internal stakeholders, really bring that out as a story, put it on, you know, your cover letter, put it on your LinkedIn profile, frankly, you know, right, as part of your work experience, you should have that as your main bullet, maybe it's a simple bullet, it's your first bullet on each on the, that work experience that you had because that's going to stand out that's going to get the recruiter's attention the hiring manager's attention when they share your linkedin profile so that's your opportunity to shine even before they see your resume frankly i say don't hold it back it's better to be able to repeat the story and be consistent actually when you get the interview if you do get it um, because now they're already intrigued by reading hey can you tell me more about this that's a very typical thing tell me about this experience uh, we were intrigued that you were able to make such a big impact uh, can any other advice i really believe you have to market yourself in today's world yeah, no, I, I fully agree with that. Yeah, don't don't share anything, right? It's just like if you had a business 
you can try to, you know, withhold like the juiciest stuff, the greatest advice you have, but the more you put it out there, that builds trust with people, especially even for job interviews and the job interview itself. You're just, you're just taking whatever's on your resume and, and that turns into examples whenever they're asking the, you those behavioral interview questions. So if they're like, tell me about a time you dealt with a difficult customer. Now you've got a situation potentially from your resume that you fleshed out and showed measurable results on. Now, you, now all you have to do is convey that with a formula called problem action result or PAR. Problem, what was the problem? What happened? Oh, customer was mad because I, you know, let's say you worked at McDonald's. I messed up their cheeseburger, right? They want to know pickles. I made it with pickles. Okay, well, you know, what was the action? Well, you know, I did this, you know, so Sally took the order and Sally told me about the customer was mad because I, you know, I put pickles on there. So I went ahead and I made a new cheeseburger fresh for the customer with no pickles on it. I had Sally double check it, make sure that there was no pickles on it. We gave it to the customer. The customer was like, oh, you're the greatest ever. I'm going to come back to McDonald's the rest of my life, right? So that was a result. So problem, action, result. That's how you answer those interview questions, behavioral interview questions, problem, action, result. So that's why you need to prepare in advance. I've got a free, um, actually, I'll create a coupon, Asta, for, I just put out an interview course. So I'll, 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 I'll create a coupon so everybody can take it for free that joins today. So check your email from Asta. Um, I'll create yes, that today please, so you'll, please. you'll get it. Yeah, yeah you'll get yeah, an email yeah, for that. Yeah. But, the, but I talk about that in the course. You know, I talk about problem, action, result. Um, I also share in that course, uh, you'll get a free copy of my book. And then also, um, there's a listing of behavioral interview questions I have in there as well that have those questions have been asked, you know, at least in some capacity. So if you just take that and you prepare your answers using problem action result, you, once you get that interview, you're going to be 99.9%. .9 like you, you should be turning down job offers at that point. You should not be the person interviewing 20 times and not getting a job offer. But you know, it, it all goes back to that. Can you show me the measurable impact? So to your question, Jose, yes, to what Simo is saying, just show it on your resume because that captures that, that attention. Um, it's just like if you had like a kid and you're trying to get them to clean their room, if you tell them clean their room, they're probably not going to do it, right? Maybe they, they're scared you're going to spank them or something. But if you say you can have this bag of candy once you clean your room, now you got their attention, right? They're like, oh my God, candy. Oh, that's the greatest thing ever. They're going to clean up their room and then you give them the candy, right? So the problem was they wouldn't clean the room. The action was you gave them the candy and now the result was they cleaned their room, right? Because you captured their attention though with the candy. If you held, if you said, oh, I'm going to give you candy, but you didn't have that bag of candy, they're still probably not going to clean that room, right? Because they're like, eh, I don't know if, you know, I can't trust her, right? I don't know if Ken's really going to give me this. But if I held the bag of candy, I say, as soon as you clean that room, this is yours. You're going to be like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let me clean my room right now. So it's hopefully that helps you. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's, that, that's what you're doing, right? You're essentially with these employers. And by the way, people love candy, but you shouldn't try to use that to get a job interview. But that's that's what you're essentially doing, right? Your resume is your candy. You're dangling, like, hey, look, I've got all these great things I've done. Here's the candy. I want you to bring me in, so you know I can help you clean the room, which is your company, right? You know, and solving the problems there. Um, and then after that, you know, the interview is a, a different ball game. But like I said, that course, I'll I'll create a coupon for everybody to take. Awesome. I think up to a hundred people. And uh, Udemy is weird, so I think I can create one more coupon. So you should be able to get a free coupon. If not, I'll put it on Teachable, whatever. Anyways, that's a digression. We'll we'll get back on track here. But hopefully now that, that yeah, that should hopefully help you, Jose. Now I know we're down to about 15 minutes of the formal um kind of one hour here today. But um oh, well, do we want to do want to take it to the interviews uh now? Um I know that or to LinkedIn. I think we want to focus on LinkedIn next. Um yeah, do you, uh, really kind of go into a couple of examples. Yeah. You want me to pull yeah, up talk a few of the Yes, Seema, I, I talked so long, um, Seema, my goodness. Um, <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, if you want to, um, do you want to pull them up, Seema? Is yeah, someone asking questions? Just, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Seema, just one question we had yeah, uh, please. on uh, resume as well. Uh, Shubhan Preet, if you want to ask that question, go ahead. Yeah, please do. Questions are welcome. Or I could just read it out from the chat. Um, sure. It is uh, that uh, there are situations when people say make different resume for every job you apply. That is kind of hard. How true it is, even if we have one job targeted, for example, cybersecurity roles only, like uh, any comments from you both on that? Yeah, so yeah, you definitely want to make it different. The reason for that is because every job description is going to have minor nuances or minor differences in the keywords. So every single resume you make, so have one like, you know, major resume or main or master, whatever term you want to use, but have one main resume with all your stuff on it and then take that and use that as for all these other ones, but just tailor it 
to every single job posting. You should not be applying, applying to like so many jobs where it makes it very difficult. Like you shouldn't be applying to 100 jobs. There's no reason for that. You should be very laser focused on, I want to work at this company and these types of roles. And, and as we're going to talk about in a second about LinkedIn, use LinkedIn, find people at those companies, talk to them. How does the hiring process work? What do you like about working there? You know, all these things around company culture as well. You can look at Glassdoor and stuff, but your resume itself should be tailored to every single role because you want the keywords to match up to whatever's in that particular job posting. And sometimes those job postings don't say exactly what they want. I'll give you a quick example. There was an ISP provider, so cable provider here in the US that was hiring and the job description was basically talking about you You had to be an expert like in SIM solutions, like they want to Splunk and stuff. I asked the hiring manager, I was like, okay, well, like what skills do you really want for this role for someone to have? And, all, and he said, all I'm looking for is someone with a little bit of Linux server experience. We'll train everything else. That was no, Linux was not even mentioned in the job posting, right? So that's why the networking side is so critical because you might be fully qualified for some job that's asking for three years experience, but you don't know that because the job posting doesn't have any of the, the things you actually, you know, any of the skills you actually have. So that's why you have to tailor it to every single job posting. And that's why the networking part is also so crucial to your job thing. Yes, it's a lot of work, but I mean, honestly, if you're, if you don't have a job, then your full-time job is finding a job. So let's be, let's be real here, right? Here in the U.S., people work 40-hour weeks, or in theory, we work 40-hour weeks. Most of us work a lot more. But 40 hours. If you're not working, then you've got at least 40 hours a week dedicated to your job search. If you're if you're doing a job search for five hours a week, then you're not going to find a job. You know, you may call me a jerk for saying that, but you're not going to get a job because you're not doing it enough. You're not putting in enough work to get that. So long winded answer to your question there, but hopefully that cleared it up for you. Yes, you need to, no matter where you are in the world, you need to tailor your resume to every single job you apply for and be very strategic with the jobs you're applying for instead of just applying to everything you see on LinkedIn. Again, follow the process we talked about earlier. Find a job on LinkedIn, Indeed, or whatever job board. Go to the company website, see if that job's number one, even still open. And number two, see if there's a way to contact them without just sending over your resume blindly. Maybe you can make a connection there. Maybe you could talk to them. Maybe you can get on a phone call with somebody. Even the sales team. Hey, do you know anyone? Do you know the hiring manager for this? Can you introduce me? I just, I really want to to talk to them, ask them a few questions or whatever, you know, or, or let them know how good I am, blah, blah, blah. People will love to help you, but only if you ask. There's a saying we have in the US, closed mouths don't get fed. So if you sit there silently, nobody knows that you need the help. So you know, I- That was a great piece of advice, Ken. The other thing I'm thinking is, you know, that you really want to make sure is, it's kind of like, and I know we use this analogy a lot, but I'll still repeat it. It is like a dating game. Think about it. If if you don't have the skills that the other person or the qualities that the other person on the other side is looking for, at the same time, they don't have the qualities you're looking for. Maybe the job description doesn't have everything that you want. Maybe it's not a good match for you and you're not going to even feel motivated or interested in the job, even if you were to get the interview and job. Think about it. You're wasting time on your end. You're wasting their time. So you want to really hone down on the specific job description. Try to understand it. Obviously, if you can make a connection through LinkedIn, try to get more information. What are they really looking for? And then see if your resume reflects that. Does your experience really reflect that? Because your chances of actually landing an interview are only going to be as strong as the relevant matchmaking skills on the resume and LinkedIn profile side for you, your experience, and that job description. The less commonalities, the less chances that that relationship is going to be built. I mean, getting the interview will be really, really hard. So I would really recommend, like Ken said, don't go for the 100 jobs to apply. Rather, go for the 10 or 15 that you think are the most well-matched. Start small. You know, if you have to go broader, you're going to need to really, really be creative because it's going to be hard to really match your, your job resume to that job. And it's just going to be a difficult relationship to be on starting footing. And you could even get the job but fail at it just because you're not the match for that job. So really, really encourage focus here and making those connections. Yeah, yeah 100% great advice. And just one thing I'll add to piggyback real quick is you see SEMA started out in in what we would call kind of an ancillary or... or um, I don't know the word to say, not, not assistant role because you're not assistant, but like like a like a not traditional cybersecurity job, right? But yeah. she's working at Cisco in a senior role. So some of these roles, like, I mean, I, I put out on my YouTube channel, which is free, the, like cyber claims adjuster, um, sales, marketing, like technical writer. These are ways to get your foot in the door at some of these companies yeah. and then get into SOC analyst, pen tester, engineer, you know, yes. whatever you want to do. Sometimes you take that that you know non-traditional role because it's open and that gets your foot in the door. There was a young woman that um, 
that got a job in cyber sales at a company. Now she's got that company on her resume. Now that's a conversation starter, right? Now that's a resume that's going to probably get through the ATS because I see that you got, she didn't work at Splunk, so I'll use Splunk as the example. Now you got Splunk on your resume. It doesn't matter if you were the janitor at Splunk. Now you have Splunk on your resume. Now that, mm-hmm. that gets my eyes open as a hiring manager, like, oh, she worked at Splunk or he worked at Splunk or they or whatever, however you gender identify. This person worked at Splunk. They must have saw someone in the, something in this person. So now, now you've got more value, and I want to bring you in for an interview, even if you're not the most qualified, because I've got to know. I'm, you know, it's that curiosity in marketing. I've got to know, you know, how, why is this person hired at Splunk? Like, what happened? You know, how'd they get the job? I've been applying to, to Splunk for years. You know, I have got it. You know, whatever. So, so little things like that too, right? Sometimes those non-traditional roles are a stepping stone into the actual job you want. So don't, don't, you know, discredit those at all, because a lot of those jobs are open. Like, Nobody wants to do sales, right? Most of us are introverts, <laughs> but there's a ton of sales jobs open. So you might get your job, you know, and then, then you might fall in love with it, right? You might be like, oh, I love this or whatever. And, you know, but jobs like that are, are ones you may look at as well, because those are often easier to get, at least here in the U.S. Yeah. And the other thing to point you again, and we'll go into some examples. Um, I would encourage if um, so- someone want to open up in the chat, if anyone wants their LinkedIn profile reviewed, if they can share their link, because some of the LinkedIn profiles that we received, again, they're not here today for us to review them. So I would hate for us to share the feedback without them being in the uh, room. But we would love to hear from the audience, which of you want to get some some real time feedback. Again, yeah. this is a very, um, you know, closed, uh, you no know, nature audience, like we won't share, you know, your stuff outside of our group. Um, so we can even keep it private, but we're happy to share feedback on your LinkedIn. If you have concerns around your LinkedIn profile and improving it, we can give you two, three tips in this last yeah. 10 minutes. So, yeah, we, we, have got one. we have yep. got one. We have one. And uh, I do have a quick question. Like question. we can follow up it, like we can follow on it later. But Jobin mm. Preet has a question that uh, can he add four years of experience but in reality, he has two years of work experience and rest of us is coming from study experience because of the job, study and skill set and projects they have. So with that, they are asking, can they bump up the experience requirement for the job? I personally mentioned them it would be two years until you had a full time internship during your studies. But if, if you don't have something to share as in terms of experience, it won't be counted. But however, I we want to listen it from you and Ken. What do you suggest? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you, I guess I'll jump in first, Seema. So sure. if you have two years of actual work and then two years of you know school or something like that, all of that is experience. So like if you're looking for job postings out there that are asking for three, four, maybe five years experience, you're fully qualified. The key there, is, and again, this is for the US market because that's where I've, I've been in in for a long, long time. I won't tell you all my age, but anyways, um, that's you just have to relate that study to you know to show those what what we call transferable skills. So what what was your study like? Like what were the projects? You know what are some of those things you worked on, and how does that translate into this current job? Because you know for anyone that doesn't have like actual work experience that just has college, you know four years of college, that still counts in a lot of jobs for experience, you know, they don't usually give you four years full, they give you like two years, you know, whatever, but it's still experience because you're gaining all this knowledge that isn't just cyber focused. So you bring a lot of value to the organization. You just have to convey that. Um, as far as like, if it's more of like, on my resume, can I list four years? No, because you don't have four years of, you could say two years, you know, of, of work, you know, of, of hard skill work experience, and then, you know, two years of study time. And here's what I did in my study time or whatever. Yeah, I, I agree on that, Ken. Um, you want to definitely not deceive. You don't want to, at the same time, undermine yourself. So you want to kind of balance between being, you know, pretty much you have your dates on your LinkedIn profile, for example. Similarly, on your resume, be consistent. Whatever you have on your LinkedIn should be reflected on your resume. So if it's showing you the specific years or months that you worked in that, you know, professional environment, have that there. Because it's going to be asked at some point. You're going to have to maybe go through a background check. So always be honest. Um, education is super powerful even you're taking LinkedIn courses, you're taking online courses in between your job when you don't have a job, that's super powerful. So don't undermine it, but at the same time, don't overplay it and oversell. That would be a big no-no. Um, but don't, definitely play up all the skills that you learned. Like he'd mentioned the transferable skills, like maybe you have to do team building. Maybe you have to be part of a team to deliver a project during your educational experience. That counts a lot in the real world. So, you know, be able to play up those skills and have a story to tell when you get that interview. Awesome. Um, so we'll, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. I see a lot of uh, LinkedIn sh- uh, 
you want to start with one of them, Ken? Yeah, yeah. So I've got a few pulled up here. Um, I just picked them randomly. So if yes. I didn't pick yours, don't don't hate on me too much. Um, we I know we're <laughs> close to time, so if anyone needs to drop, feel free to. For those that are able to stay, we'll try to be brief. Um, I talk a lot. I was worried about that coming into this, no but for anyone that needs to drop, I know some people it's nighttime. Anyways, let me share. Start with one of them. Here. Yeah. To our organizers today, I'm seeing a five minute left in the meeting. Would we be able to go a little bit more if we need to, or does it have a hard cut on Microsoft Teams? No, uh, good. no, 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 it's not a hard cut. We actually are good, so we can go over like 10 minutes, but I think definitely we should complete this LinkedIn one. I think it's very helpful. Thank you so much for being so flexible. Thank you. Awesome. Um, can everyone see the screen? And if we pronounce your name wrong, um, please forgive us, uh, but I should see Aninda's profile here. Does everyone see that? Yes, I see it here. Cool. Um, so I'll just jump in with my my thoughts and then um, I'll turn it over to you, uh, Seema. Yeah. So uh, number one, uh, go on a, a website like canva.com or something and just create like a, a cover photo for the background. It just makes your profile pop a little more. Um, try to make it relevant to whatever role you're actually trying to get. You know, if it's like security engineering or something, you could put cybersecurity engineer or you could put like a computer or, or whatever, just something that's relevant. Like don't put a picture of you at the club unless you're trying to like tell people that you're, you know, you're trying to get a job at the nightclub. So just something relevant to cyber. It, it's not critical, but it just, it helps your profile pop a little more. The most critical part is going to be of your entire profile is your headline right here. So if you just want people to, to, to know that you're a security consultant at this place, um, I'm assuming you're not looking for a job. You're, we won't share this with your employer if you are. But your headline, you really want it to be about the problem you solve. So, for example, um, you know, I, I help, I don't know this company. So I'm going to assume there may be a consulting company. Just I, I don't know what they do. But let's say they're a consulting company. I help They clients. are mobile providers. Sorry, okay. they're mobile providers in Canada. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Mobile Thanks. service providers. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So I help, I help you know, customers secure their mobile data. That should be something like your headline, right? It shows what you do without without you having to go like really deep into what you do, right? So it has the impact I, in it without getting too deep, right? Also the impact exactly, you're making on yeah. who is your stakeholder, in this case, customer or whatnot. Love exactly. It. It's, you know, in business, we call a USP or unique selling pro proposition. It's your one liner essentially, right? If someone, if I met you on the elevator at a security conference and I say, what do you do? I help customers secure their mobile data. I know exactly what that means. Even if I'm a third grader, I know how to repeat that. That's easy for me to repeat. If you're like security consultant that tell us, I don't know what that means, right? You, see, you know, thankfully Austin knew what that company was. I didn't know. I would have had to look yeah. it up. But if you tell me I help customers secure their mobile data, I know exactly what that is. And the other benefit there is if I'm a business looking for someone that can help me secure mobile data, I'm going to contact you. And maybe you're at that point in your life or looking for a new job. And I'm like, well, you know, I've got a position. And now there's a match, right? Uh, like Seema mentioned with the dating. <laughs> now, now we're dating because I can just clearly see what you know what the impact is that you have. Um, Seema, any thoughts on the? Yeah, the no, I think that's really good advice. Short and sweet is also all right. To your point, you could be one or two liners because you don't get a lot of room on that headline. So you want to make an impact quickly. And if you can add a number in there, help to you know secure the data of this many customers or you know help to um, increase you know revenue by this much, depending on your role. If you can at least, if you can back that up, you should put a number in there also. That just really shows that you had a measurable impact. So you add that measurable part with a number. Again, make sure we can back it up if you were asked in an interview, but having a number could also be powerful in that headline. The other thing I noticed now, Ken, is that we have this activity is the next section. Is that something that's by default or are we able to modify that or customize that look? Because that takes up a pretty large real estate I'm seeing. The activity has yeah, so not been very uh, active. Yeah, so what you're not seeing here is you're not seeing the about section, which I definitely recommend, Aninda, if you're still on, I recommend you add that in there. Um, that's a critical area as well. So that's kind of the next spot. So essentially, when you're selling yourself on LinkedIn, the headline and then the about section are the main things that anyone looks at. Some people will go down to your experience and stuff. Some people look at your activity, but it's pretty rare. I'd say maybe like 2% of people will do all that extra work. Most people are looking at headline and about section. About. I agree. I was missing that here. Section. Yeah, yeah, the about is powerful because about is so now you're going yeah. deeper in your skills. Yeah. I think about you can add your skills. You mm -hmm. can add the relevant skills if you're actively looking for a job. Definitely have the relevant skills and your technical skills in there also. I think it'll very kind of match your resume in many ways because if you're trying to give a headline on your resume, that should almost match what's here depending on the role you're look, looking for or what you want to highlight for your next role. Remember, LinkedIn is all about not just your current role, but it's really about what would you look for in your next dream role. 
know, it could be at your current company too. It doesn't even have to be the next company, but you want to get the attention of recruiters at the end of the day. LinkedIn is about that. And of course, your connections should be your advocates. So you know, let's, if we go further down, hopefully you have some recommendations also. And in the, if you leave out with nothing, I'd say go and get some recommendations. It's the other piece that will be powerful. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I'll just say on the about section is, is when you look at it on someone's profile like this, you essentially see usually the first three lines is all. So what I recommend is when, whenever you figure out what your headline is, just copy and paste that again in your about section as a first line. And then I would say something like skilled in, because then that terminology skilled in makes me want to expand it and read everything else about you. So that's where you can then, as Seema mentioned, list a bunch of bullets of whatever you can do. You can share some examples, you know, whatever, but you want to, again, kind of like we talked about with the resume above the fold, you want to capture their attention. You only get like three lines to do it on LinkedIn without them expanding it. So the other thing I'll mention is the headline. I usually see people, usually entry level people trying to get their first cyber job. They list like three or four different types of cyber careers, cybersecurity analyst, SOC analyst, pen tester, pick one. Don't, don't put four or five different because nobody knows what you want. So pick one thing and go all in on that. Don't try to, oh, I'll do whatever. No, because then nobody will hire you. Pick one thing and go all in on it. And everything about your LinkedIn should be all about that thing, whatever that is, whether it's GRC analyst, security consultant, security engineer, pen tester, whatever it is, One, just pick one thing. That's the biggest, that, that honestly is the biggest mistake I see people making is they don't pick one thing. They, I, I'll do cybersecurity. Cybersecurity isn't a job. Cybersecurity is an entire thing right entire thought entire industry entire everything so you you can't do cybersecurity job you can do something in that right some career in that so that's you know that's my advice on the biggest one of the biggest mistakes i see people making as part of the job search and it's one of the the biggest barriers actually to you getting you know interviews and as well as job offers and then the last piece of advice will be if you go down to the experience here on this page at the end of the day i would like to see something like the resume just having a simple description is okay, but what would really stand out is again, your impactful things where you can add metrics, what you've made changes, you've made changes to the business changes to, and you know, like really positive changes within that company based on your role. And it could be just, in, I'd rather have one or two bullets that are very impactful rather than like, again, the copying your resume into this, that, that's not valuable. This is your chance to tell a story with each experience. How did it additively add to your experience and how does it make you more, um, again, a, you know, experienced professional over time. I want to see progress on each of these roles, how they've helped you develop to where you are today. That, that's a story I would like to get from your experience. So I'm not just reading bullets because the resume could be used for that, I think, over time. But this is a chance to shine. And again, they may not scroll all the way down. So you want to really leverage your most recent or most relevant experience at the top. And then everything else could be at the bottom. I, with the experience I've had, I'll even like pretty much summarize my very like early career jobs or even remove them from my LinkedIn because they're not relevant any longer for me. Um, my more recent experience is more relevant. So relevant, honest, and short and sweet is how I would go with this. This is about storytelling and you want to be able to share some of those stories also in your interview. So be careful Absolutely. to balance yeah. that. Um, the other thing I need to, for you in particular, if you're ever looking to move into management, this VP of sales, flesh it out a lot more, like put anything measurable in there. Cause then when you go for those roles, they're going to look at your LinkedIn. They're going to see, oh, okay, she was a VP, you know, at some point. And so that that that's information they would see. And and at that point, I would also probably take out this junior role from there, um, and as well as a student thing that you have on there. But again, that's only if you ever are looking to move into management. Um, so some of these other things on here, what is, um, I know we're over time here, but education, same thing as Simo was saying with the experience, a couple bullet bullet points in the education of like, what did you actually learn in there? Like what were some of the, the projects you did? Cause I know for a fact with a bachelor's degree, you did some kind of projects. Um, high school, you probably don't need to at this point in your career, you don't need to list that, but definitely your bachelor's degree. Um, volunteer work is always good. Again, you know, taught seniors, you know, maybe run this through like chat GPT or something and just say, you know, what's a, you know, create a catchy, a catchy one liner or something from this and then catch, you know, let the AI spit out something that would catch someone's attention a little more than just taught seniors. Uh, but again, that's, that's not a huge area. And then the other part I'll just comment on is uh, this is good for people. You can list any kinds of courses like CompTIA, Net, Net Plus. Um, if you're doing trainings like that on cyber or any other sites, you can put them there. It just kind of makes your, uh, makes your profile a little more impactful. And then uh, skills as well, your top three skills. So whatever you want those to be known for. Um, and then I'm going to shut up and let you, I'm going to go back up, Seema, because I kind of Yeah, I think that's good. No, no, I think, no, that's section? awesome. I think you've done, yeah, good. It's very thorough. I think hopefully this helps Aninda.
to improve and, you know, just keep on, and it's a, it's a continuous process. Don't feel like it's one and done. Keep, keep, you know, looking at it every, you know, every, every few weeks, if you need to, if you're actively looking for a job, otherwise, you know, at least every quarter, I would say every three, four months, it's good to add your new experience, add some new projects you've done, anything new to your most current experience also. So never feel like you shouldn't be touching this. Definitely keep in mind recruiters out there and maybe your next dream job you don't even know about yet. So you want to make sure that you're keeping it fresh. Awesome. All right, I'm going to stop and I'm going to go to the next one real yeah. quick so we can. We have about five more minutes, so we might be able to take one more. Um, unfortunately, not too many more after that, but certainly happy to kind of follow on if you want more advice. You can uh, reach out to BBWIC. I have shared so, your LinkedIn profiles. Attendees are really looking forward to connect with you and Ken Seema. Yeah, no so problem. I hope you both don't mind. I've shared your LinkedIn profile link. Oh. They will send you a request. Oh, it's Shruti's profile. I know Shruti. <laughs> Um, Go ahead, I, I'll, Ken. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, just on on that, Hi, I will everyone. say uh, I will say um, it's it's best if you send a message with your with your request to me, just so you kind of go to the top of my list because I get like a thousand requests a day, um, and I I usually vet people. But if you send me a message, say you were on this, then I I'll still vet same you here. a little bit. Yeah, but, same here. I would but, love that. I think it'll be yeah, good connection. It just makes us. it yeah yeah. It just makes it easier on those of us to get a ton of them to just sort quickly sort through and accept it faster than than wait a week or two. Um, so anyways, yes, yeah, so uh, so we know Shruti. Um, we're going to talk about hers as well. Uh, so we talked about uh, the, the Aninda, she was in Canada, uh, but a lot of what we talked about goes across any country, just FYI, right? These are, these are the same things across all over the world. Um, I don't know the Indian job market. I've never worked over there, obviously, but I've hired different companies on contract from there. So I know a little bit about it, but same philosophy here, right? Same, same things we talked about already, right? The, the cover photo in the background, something there. The headline, you know, so, so, you know, the question is, do you want to be known as a podcaster? Do you want to be known as, you know, customer success manager? Do you want to know about, do you want to be known for, you know, this, you know, so, so Shruti, you can have all these things, but I would start with what we talked about having that initial headline, right? Like, what is, like, what do you do? Like, what do you want to be known for, right? Are you, you know, help, you know, helping keep customers, you know, I help keep customers happy. Simple, right? We all know what that means. And then from there, I can look at, oh, she's a podcaster as well. She's, you know, co-founded InfoSec Girls, you know, all these other things she's doing. But I know for, for a fact, she helps keep customers happy. It's very simple. I can share that. When I think about, when someone asks me, hey, do you know anyone that can help keep our customers happy? Oh, duh, of course I do. But, <laughs> love it. You know, but, love it. But, that's but again, that marketing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's you have to sell is, yourself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that, that's all this is, right? That, mm -hmm. Job, getting a job, it's just marketing and sales. It's literally all it is. Pretend that you're a business. You are a business, right? The business mm -hmm. of you. And and the same thing when you go negotiate like compensation, salary, and stuff. It's your bit. You're a business. You're you're there. You're there. Essentially, think of yourself. Even if you're getting like a, a full time job and not a contractor job, you're a contractor, right? Your company's you. The company of you is being contracted with this other company for, you know, however long you plan to stay there. So don't let these companies get off cheap when they're when you're negotiating. Know your value, right? Know what you bring to the table. And the better that you interview, in their head, they automatically know, I'm going to have to pay for this person. As an example, uh, there's a there's a, a place that reached out, um, I think it was last year. I think it was late last year. I'm, I'm not looking for a job, right? Like, I, you know, I got my own thing. But they reached out, um, this place, and I know, the, I know the founder very well. And he said, you know, we're thinking about, you know, making you an offer to come in you know, as C the CEO of, of this company. Uh, but, but based on that initial conversation, you know, he, he came back after talking to investors and they knew they couldn't afford me because I, because I carry myself a certain way. I speak a certain way. I, I interview a certain way if I was interviewing for jobs. So a company automatically knows they're going to have to pay top dollar to get me. And they also know based on, you know, LinkedIn and, and resumes and all this stuff, if I was applying for a corporate job, they also know that I'm going to make them a lot of money in their company. So you need to be the same way, right? You're, you, this company is going to make a lot of money off you. So I, I can tell you as a business owner, typically you pay someone a salary, you're expected to make 10 times that off them in that year, whether that's through saving money or making money or whatever, but you're expecting their contributions will at least make you a 10x return minimum. Most companies are looking for a 20 or 30x return. That's why a lot of people, they'll get six figures, but then they work themselves to death because the company's trying to make you know, a ton of money off you. So you need to 
change your mindset if you're someone listening right now to this and, and you're saying, well, you know, I'm just out of school. I don't have the skills to ask for, you know, a lot of money. Whatever number you're thinking in your head, add 40% on top of that and say that's what you're, you know, what you're offering. So I know I digressed there a little bit, but for job interviews, yeah. for negotiation, understand your worth, you have value and whatever you're going to do for the company is going to help them make money or save money. And so at the end of the day, you need to make sure they pay you because you're not going to get that in an annual review. Like raise, raises, if they happen, are one to 2% in most companies, maybe 3% if you're lucky. So get all that money up front that you can. And then that way you, you're not upset in a year, like, oh, I worked hard and they didn't give me a raise. You can say to yourself, well, I got them for a lot of money up front, right? I got a nice sign-on bonus. I got all these things. So you stay happier as well, you know, as, as a worker out there. So we, I know we're down to time. So do you want to uh, just let's walk quickly through um, shoot these. Now, one piece of advice I'd give before we go further, um, I do really like that you've kept the uh, link. If that's something you want to emphasize, your anchor.fm, your stories infosec, I would bring it up to the top a little bit because it's starting to go below your contact information, which probably is like important later. So if you really want to highlight that, I do encourage you to put it right in your um, kind of your, you know, either up top or in the about me summary. So it's a little bit more highlighted right now. It's kind of buried. So just be mindful of that a little bit. Um, yeah, what the, else? Yeah. yeah, I'll say the other thing on, on that is you can actually, LinkedIn allows you to put whatever text you want for this link that you have here. So you could just put, you know, check out my podcast or something like that. And then that way you don't have this whole link there. Lovely. So you can, you can, Lovely. you'll see that if you go to edit your profile. Um, yeah, another yeah. thing here is, as you, you mentioned, Seema, the about section, right? This is such a critical part, but, uh, oh, there it is right down there. So yeah, so try to move dumb. that up. Yeah, just, yeah, you should be able to drag and drop it in the editor and put it way up here because that's, that's what you want. You want people to see, and I, it may be LinkedIn. They might have changed things. I don't know. But yeah, it's been strange. I think activity higher. show up at the top. Yeah, let's try to see if we can do that, folks. So, yeah. so is that yeah. something in my controls? We'll have to look uh, yeah, into sure. that. Yeah, it might be. It might be. Yeah, you might be, or LinkedIn might have changed it. You know, and I just haven't awesome. noticed it yeah. specifically. They might have changed the order of it, uh, but a lot of the same information here, right? As as uh, Seema had shared flesh out some more bullet points here of, of these roles, you know, exactly. Tell stories, right? I mean, I, to me, I don't want this to look like a resume. That is not the intention of LinkedIn. You're not going to have a scanning the same way you have a resume where you have to have keywords as much. This is your storytelling. This is your selling yourself. What was the key impact you made in each of these roles, right? I'd rather have, like I said, one bullet point or one sentence on each of these, especially if you have more than 10 things, 10 experiences, just go for the main impactful project or, um, you know, really big deal that you cut or the really big impact you made on a customer due to your engineering work, right? So what was the outcome? Always be very outcome focused here because that's what's going to matter. People are going to care that you can actually make a difference to their customers or their business, you know, improve it in some way. So really focus there. On what we the other thing I just kind of thought of or triggered in my mind on, on your experience section. So let's say you're trying to get a new job for whatever your most recent job or that last job you're putting on here. Um, to see this point of telling a story, you can say some, you know, you can say something like, you, you would think that my job at AppSeco, you know, was, you know, is a dream job or, you know, I thought this was going to be my dream job and that I would become CEO one day. But then I realized, you know, and then people will click on that to see what what you realized. Right. They'll expand that and look more at your experience because they want to figure out, oh, what's that secret that, you know, that she realized. And, and that that also explains that question that an a interviewer might have of why are you trying to leave your current role? You can put that on your LinkedIn. Right. And you can make it something you don't say because my boss sucks. You say something like, you know, I, you know, I wanted to, I, I realized that CEO wasn't for me, but security engineer was, and I, and I wasn't able to do that, you know, where I'm currently am. So great company, blah, blah, you know, whatever. But the, the storytelling can be wrapped into things like that to make it. And, and again, you can use things like chat GPT. If you don't know how to do storytelling, you just let the AI do it for you and, and put that in here. Cause it's, it's, it, it makes it, you you want your profile just like your resume you want it to just grab people you want people to read you want people to take the time out of their day to like sit down like we're doing now and go through your profile but you want to have it in a spot where they're they like want to do it right they want to read through it and everything and to me, like one should not hesitate just because, I mean, you have a job and you're, you're trying to like not let your manager or your team, or your company know about it. It's more like you should be putting in there what you desire next. And frankly, if your current employer even reads it or recruiter, they'll be like, hey, I didn't realize that truthfully you wanted this, you know, let's talk about it. Give an opportunity. Maybe sometimes you don't have the opportunity to be that explicit, maybe in certain one-on-ones, but now this is your chance to shine and say what you do want, right? And so I think to your point, Ken, nothing wrong with it. Put it in your title, put it in your about section. Would like, you know, my ideal world would be this you're not saying anything to your current company that you're upset with them. You're just saying what you would like. 
and frankly they should know too and and it's totally fine nothing to hide nothing to be you know shy about yeah the majority of companies at least in the u.s they're, they're not going to look at your experience section on your linkedin like after you're hired so it's probably fine to put in there if they see they're going to look at your post to make sure you're not posting any racist or or whatever stupid things like that that, that they may fire you on so it's pretty experience so it's really safe is what i'm kind of getting at to put it in there um, the other thing i just want to touch on real quick because i know we're, we're over time is the, re the recommendations you mentioned this earlier sema recommendations yes. um this is like if you go on amazon and you shop most of us look at the reviews first to say oh it's a good thing or it's a bad thing or this thing broke or whatever this is the same thing right this is just people it could be a professor it could be someone you know it could even be your grandmother but just people coming on and, and kind of giving that street credibility or that you know that online credibility that that you're somebody that is trustworthy and things like that what i will say though is when you're would want to say send that to the person and and when you say hey do you mind writing me a recommendation for you know whatever it is from you know from when i was a student and you know i um oh, thanks uh thanks by the way uh sami uh hopefully I pronounced your name right thanks for the by the way for the pop-up and the thank you on that <laughs> for the session uh we are live so you will see some pop-ups potentially uh, but anyways the, the the point here is that make it easy for people to give you the review right make it very easy on them so send them like here's here's an idea of what i thought but you know, please feel free to do what you want. But I want to give you kind of an idea of what it might look like. Yeah, you could kind of do a little sample, yeah, sample like you know, yeah, snippet yeah. of what you'd like, and they can obviously put exactly. in their own voice. And yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it makes it easier and it makes it much more likely that someone's going to actually give you a recommendation, okay. because a lot of people always, can you give me a recommendation, right? You get a, I, I probably, I probably get a hundred of those a day at least. But if you take the step and say, here's a suggestion of how to do it cool then then like Sima just said i can take that i can change a few words make it my voice and bam it's done in five minutes versus now i got to sit down think about it think about the projects you worked on as a student for me you know all that stuff like just give me the answer and then i can change it to my answer awesome well i know we're kind of on time now yes, um but yes. asta you raised your hand i think you wanted to help us wrap yes um, yes yes I, I was just i was just saying that maybe uh we can uh request everyone that today after this session if you can go out and request for a uh, recommendation and just know like maybe in a post or maybe in a chat that how did it go and i know the session has actually gone overboard we can have like a part two of this session in the next couple of months i i really feel that we had a lot to share and a lot to talk about and one more thing, Seema, um, attendees shared that in order to connect with you, they need an email account. So uh, I left it for you to answer that question for them. Oh, but thank uh, you do so you, much. OK, yeah. I mean, an email account, meaning that they need an email or they would need my email? Is that the question? Um, your email. OK, yep. Maybe we can um, share the email that I typically use. It is very simple. The word reach, R-E-A-C-H, my first name, Seema, S-E-E-M-A. K, reach Seema and not the letter K at yahoo.com. So if you can capture that from the chat, happy to kind of, you know, respond and let me know again in your intro email, if you want to send me an email, um, you know, that you're following up from BBWIC session today. So I know who you are. Thank you. Happy to help. Perfect. Thank you, Ken. This it's been a great partnership. Amazing. So yeah, great, great session. Yeah, as I also mentioned, we can do a, another one um, potentially on like interviews and kind of dig into that. Um, yes. I will share. So check your check your messages from BBWIC. I will right after we jump off here. I'll create that coupon, uh, and then share that with Austin them, and they'll they'll be pushing that out. So sign up for that. It's on Udemy. So if you have Udemy, it's it's just another course to sign up. It'll be free for everyone. I think I can create a free one. If not, I'll I'll let Austin them know, and I'll do it a different way. I'll I'll get you all the access a different way. Um, but yeah, check that out. That'll help you a lot with your job interviews in that course. And then I mean, from what we shared today, coupled with that, I think. All of you should be in a really good position moving forward, as long as you take action on what we shared, because you can collect all the knowledge in the world, but if you can't take action on it, then there's nothing any of us can do to help you on, on that regard. So um, be sure to take action on it, and then you should be good to go for jobs. And it, and patience, because, I mean, I, I don't think I shared it earlier. I, I've changed my name on, uh, on my resume stuff and sent it to job postings and heard nothing back on things I'm fully qualified for. So just just because you don't hear back doesn't mean it's you. Oftentimes it's them, right? In some capacity, it could be a, a number of things. ATS system glitched that day, 
you know, the, the, the cyber gods are frowning on you, whatever it is, you know, a lot of things can happen, but just keep, keep with it, stay persistent and you should be fine. And by the way, once you get your billions like Bill Gates, don't forget about all of us, right? Invite us to the yacht party. I love that. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Seema and Ken, for this inf insightful session. Everyone, um, we hope you enjoyed. Uh, we would love to hear from you in the chat. How did you feel? And maybe if you want another session, we'll plan for it accordingly. And our team will also share uh, after session survey. So if you can take just two minutes to fill out that survey, this can help us plan another session for you all. So just wanted to let you know. And um, thank you so much for joining us over the weekend and giving your precious time. And we all wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.